Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Today I'm going to be working on this old ball peen hammer that a buddy of mine gave me. I'm really having a lot of fun with these restoration videos, so this is a relatively easy project. A little bit of rust and a new handle and I'm going to get this thing looking real good real quick. So the first thing I'm going to do is just try to take as much rust as I can off and doing this while the handle is still on it so I got a nice firm grip. Again, I'm using gloves. Some people think you should not wear gloves with rotating uh, wheels like this, but I think there's more of a chance of brushing my fingers up against that wire wheel than for something to get caught in it. So I'm into the gloves. So next step, take it over to Vice and try to knock the handle out of the head which is proving to be very difficult. That is really in there extremely tight. So I'm whacking it pretty good here with a hammer and this big chisel, but it's, uh, it doesn't want to give. So I went over to the bandsaw and cut the handle off. And I'm gonna to try to punch it in from the bottom up, which that didn't work too well either. So I decided to take it over to drill press and just relieve some of the stress and friction inside that head. It did have a metal wedge from the top. This is the bottom. It did have a metal wedge in there, so let's be careful not to hit the wedge. Okay, so here I've got the chisel in my left hand and I've knocked it through. Now I'm trying to get the chisel out. And so now I'm hitting the chisel downward with another chisel just to clear out the hole. Yeah, that wood was stubborn in there. But, you know, a few minutes and a little bit of patience, I got to it. I'm going back to the wheel and trying to get all the rust off that I did not have taken off before. And buffing it in the meantime as well. You might notice this little buffer grinder and just have it bolted onto my workbench here with a couple clamps. So now I need to make the handle, I'll grab the piece of uh, hard maple and cutting it the length, this is about 18 inches. It's a long hammer handle. And you gotta cut it the length. Love my boss slide saw. Works great. And as long as I've been having all these new hand planes and old hand planes, decided to true up one side with that. And then I took it over to the table saw and cut it to width. Okay, so when you turn a handle, you have to do it offset turning. So what I'm doing here is just identifying the center of the board. And I did that by drawing an X and drawing a horizontal line through the middle now that I know where the center is. Now from the center line, I'm going out an eighth of an inch and quite honestly I did this a couple different times I tried it at an eighth of an inch and also a quarter and an eighth of an inch offset from the center worked better I got a better oblong
Okay, so that what it looks like after I put a couple dots in there with a scratch off. I would also recommend if you're going to do this, number those two holes, one and two on both ends so that you don't get to choose which hole that you're using because you do have to switch back and forth. Uh, you have to hook up one with one on the other side and two and two uh, in the second set of holes. So from there it's a relatively easy process of just making a long taper. I'm running the lathe at about 2100 RPM. Here I'm using a spindle roughing gouge. And it's perfect for this uh, operation. Sometimes I see people using this gouge on a bowl and don't ever do that. That's one of the cardinal sins of turning. You never use a spindle roughing gouge on a bowl. It could create a very big mess. It could break the bowl, it could break the tool itself, and it could break you. So don't ever do that. That's my safety tip for the day. Okay, so for the final fit, I used a combination of spoke shave, shinto rasp, and files in order to get the that part of the handle to fit the head. And then drilling a hole where the bottom of the kerf is going to be, and this helps prevent the wood from splitting when you put the wedge in. So take your time during that process. And now here I'm doing the saw kerf. You notice that little box in the upper left hand side there. I'm working on some veneer projects right now. That's, that's one of them. That's going to be a uh, custom jewelry case. That's going to be in another episode of Bob's Woodshop. Okay, I spared you the footage of me cleaning up the handle on my random orbital sander and just jumping right into fitting the handle in the head. You notice we just got a food delivery. My wife's still waiting for the alcohol to dry on that. Welcome to COVID. Here's what people like to see. That's how you really drive a handle into a head. And a little bit of glue. I made a little wedge out of some oak and gluing that in and then uh, driving that home with my good old Craftsman hammer. I think I've had that Craftsman hammer for about 50 years. It's still hanging in there, I love it. So that's the piece of wood where I got the wedge out of and now I'm just trimming the, the top of the handle there. So to finish it up, I'm put a little coat of uh, cherry stain on there just to give it a little bit of pizzazz. And I'm probably going to put a little bit of uh, polyurethane on that later on. So this was a very easy project. I mean, the rust came off really within probably five minutes. And you know, making a handle is really not a big deal as long as you use that offset technique that I showed you earlier that's how you make ovals. A little bit of hand work fitting the handle into the head and uh, yeah. This is the part of the project that it feels very satisfying that you know that you have taken a piece of history and cleaned it up really nice back into a functional and attractive tool.
Ta-da! Looking good. Hey, you guys know to drill. If you like my content, please like, comment, and subscribe. And thanks for spending a few minutes of your day with me. Until next time, stay safe in your shop. Bye-bye.